The best way to learn how to hack a system is literally to jump into the mind of a hacker. So let's go there. Practical is best. Knowledge for the sake of knowledge is worthless. Meaning, when, when you start learning something, if you're just learning facts and figures, it'll soon slip away. <laughs> to give you an example, I learned four years of French in high school, and I don't remember in, uh, I remember Je m'appelle Jerome. <laughs> That's about it. Because I didn't use it. It wasn't practical. I never went to France. I didn't apply it. Thus, the knowledge is gone. And I know you know this. And yet, there's so often that we fall into the, oh, let's just gather information, gather information, not realizing there's a hole in our bucket. So, to go practical, as we're learning how to hack into anything, I thought, why not? I've got a Ubiquiti Edge router, uh, Infinity right here, which is their top of the line router, 10 gig router. It's a phenomenal little box, about $2,000 uh, or so. Um, and it's literally in the box right here. And I thought, well, let's, let's use this to go practical. But you know what? To go practical, <laughs> at least to start, I'm not even going to open it because we're in the phase of threat hunting that I would call, oh, let me say that a different way. We're in the phase of security assessment techniques that I would call threat hunting. And threat hunting doesn't mean that we're ripping open the box and setting up a device and, and seeing how we can hack into it. That's, that's more of a vulnerability scan method that we would have. Threat hunting starts with your web browser. Let's go there. I've got my web browser brought up, and the first thing that I would do if I was trying to hack into a Ubiquiti Edge router is I would, I would read the docs. I would say uh, Ubiquiti Edge Router Docs, right? And uh, right there, let's see, Fusion PV Docs, uh, Edge, uh, so wait a sec. <laughs> I'm on Bing. I should, well, no, no let me, let me uh, I'm not going to slam Bing. But I don't like it. Um, but I will say, when you're searching for information, and I'll, I'll, I'll go there in just a second, sometimes using different search engines will give you an amazing perspective that you can use that it, to, to your advantage. Bing, <laughs> that's why I was staring at this. I'm like, this isn't what I, I thought I would see. Does not return the same results as Google. And sometimes as you're searching for obscure information, <laughs> Bing is your best place. No, it's, it's, it, you know, it's good to have different search engine perspectives. So let's, ah, there we go. That's what I would, I would think you'd return for Ubiquity Edge. Right? How about the user guide, right? So I would open this guy up right here, which is the user guide for this. And the main thing that I'm looking for, <laughs> and I, I would just search right for it, is password. What is the default username and password uh, for this device? And you can see right here, it says uh, enter UBNT. So, okay, default IP is right there, default username and password. So again, if I'm, if I'm threat hunting right now, I'm going right to my, my docs and I'm going, okay, core operation, uh, default uh, username uh, slash password colon UBNT. Why is that significant? Well, I can't tell you how many times you get a new device like that, and it, it could be in business, it could be in home, it doesn't matter where you're using it. You open it up, you log in, and you're like, oh, configure, and you're going through, right? And at the end of it, you got it ready to go, and you just stick it into the rack. Or, or you add another administrative account and forget to disable the default. So as you're, you're scanning, I mean, number one, you've got a username that's the default admin username. That's one piece of the puzzle. Sometimes people don't change that, but I would definitely add that to the, one of the first things that I would try to try and hack into a device that I could find, right? So, so I would continue down this list, uh, actually right here, uh, of, of th this is what I would so call core operations. What, what services are running on this device? Is it an FTP server? Is it a web server? Uh, does it do NTP, for example? You know, all of these things are puzzle pieces that I would say fall under that category of threat hunting, right? We're trying to find ways that we can break into that device. Okay, number two, we come down to our advisories and bulletins. Once again, we're back on Bing, we're back on Google, and that's where we would come up here and say, okay, I'm going to say Ubiquiti Edge Router uh, Advisories. Uh, Advi advisory, right? Um, so let's let's see if there's any, you know, advice. Let, let, let's let's add a, a word to that. Security advisory, right? How about that? Um, so we got firewall guide, 
Uh, it looks like somebody, you know, nice, but scary. Hmm. You know, let's go that, you know, service. Oh, hey, look at this. We've got uh, a service exposure allows DOS ta attack. So, so this, this is not typically what I would call an advisory, but it's some really good information. It's saying, hey, January 19th, I'm looking at the date. Okay, 2019. Ah, uh, maybe good, maybe good, right? It says uh, this is, uh, you know, some, some exploits were being, uh, some, some exploits were found to allow denial of service attacks using port 10,001 UDP. Now, the reason you heard me go, ah, uh, January 2019 is about a year ago, mm, maybe a little bit more. Right now, I'm in November of 2020, election season, right? Um, so so m almost two years ago, the further back you go on these advisories, the more chance it's going to be patched, right? You're looking for stuff in that sweet spot, six months, maybe one year. You start going beyond that, and you, you've got to be a pretty irresponsible administrator uh, not to be patching your devices at least once a year, not not to say it doesn't happen, and and there's a, there's also a mindset that administrators will have of hey, it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, don't don't patch it is the mindset which which works for most things, except for security, right? So you start making lists of things like that. Now now again, like I was saying, let's let's go back over here. Okay, take this, shoop, right out of uh, right out of um, uh, Bing, and head on over to Google. <laughs> That's a good reminder for me to change my default search engine on Internet Edge here, right? So look at that, Security Advisory Bulletin Number One. So again, April 2019, actually a little more recent than the one I just just found. Um, okay, this is Edge Switch firmware. Okay, mate, does that use the same the same software? And, and you would start finding things out here, and and couple things I want to say. One, you would find out that the software this little gem uses is called Edge OS. It's a standard software that you would have on any Edge router. And, and they, you know, this is the top of the line, $2,000 or so for that little box. But they make an Edge router X that's like 60 bucks, 90 bucks, something like that. You know, like really low end. But, but the key is they all use the same OS. So that tells you something. If you're trying to hack into a business that probably has the $2,000 router because they can afford it, you don't have to buy it. Buy a little Edge Router X because it uses the same Edge OS and these vulnerabilities would be part of that. And this is where I'm going to stop right there. Finding these vulnerabilities is the, the key piece of the puzzle, right? This is not, this is not like, okay, there, there we go. Okay, Jeremy did it in like, what, what was that? Like five minutes, right? He found some vulnerable. No, 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 no. If you're trying to break into this, this, this hardware, this software, the Edge OS, you're doing this for hours. You're making a list in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Doc or what, whatever you've got of all the vulnerable. Okay, okay, you know, what are these things? You might even end up going to a website like this, CVE details. Now, so CVE is a thing. It stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. This is something that's a little bit more along the lines of threat feeds, right? There are all kinds of feeds out on the internet. Matter of fact, hey, if you're, if you're taking some notes, which I, I hope you would do, first off, um, go ahead and jot down CVE equals Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. It's a common thing. And these threat feeds all around the internet, and let, let me take you to, to one right here, uh, will have CVEs and more. Matter of fact, <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> come back here. One more thing to write down. Uh, let's put it in blue. Uh, you might just put, uh, just search for it. Yeti. Yeti, actually, don't just uh, search for Yeti um, threat, right? The name of the software is called Yeti. It's one of, of many types. Hang on, I'll, I'll show you right here, and then we'll come back to the CVE. Yeti uh, threat, there, threat intelligence, there we go, uh, right there. Um, this is an open source software that you can install on Linux, and it literally pulls from all the different threat feeds that you specify. As you can imagine, as you dive deeper into security, you know, feed number one might have some good info over here, there's another feed over here. You're gonna be, you're gonna be spending hours. So, so Yeti will go out there and grab them all from here and put them into your own local database that you can store locally, search, index, all those kind of things, and do things like this. Let me, let me take you back over here. Coming back to the CVE details, I'm going to search for, uh, let's do a Ubiquity, right? Enter, Ubiquity. Uh, you know, some initial ads, they got, they got to fund their site somehow, right? But I'll come down here, uh, and right there is our security vulnerabilities, right? 
boom, we've got a bunch of CVEs. I'm, and the first thing I'm scanning is the dates, which I'm like, eh, not, okay, not, not super, super recent, but also, also keep in mind, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing this ubiquity box that I have right here because I have it right here, right? If you, the, the, the ubiquity is a fairly new vendor in terms of the network equipment, they're growing fast. But I mean, if you're going for, for standard enterprise, uh, Cisco, Juniper, I mean, Try it. Go go on over to CV. Type that in. You're you're. Brrr, you know, there's so many more because you know right now ubiquity is kind of secure because it's obscure. Security through obscurity, right? Um, so so it's it's not as as big of a platform as some of these other ones. And you'll have hundreds of CVEs to to look at there. A lot more recent. The, the, again, the reason I'm bringing this up is because these CVEs, the date matters. Typically, the older it is, the more likely it's been patched. But let's look at what one of these looks like, right? comes up right here, and this is where we'd have to filter it for Edge Router or Edge OS. Uh, it says, hey, the, the Edge switch suffers from an externally controlled format string vulnerability due to lack of predictability, right? So first off, you know, this, this describes the type of attack, but if you're like, what does that mean? Come on over here, CWEID, click it, right? And it'll explain, okay, an uncontrolled format string is kind of like a buffer overflow attack. It's where you've, you've got a format string right here, like a print F call, and people are, are jamming variables in there and, and, and they, they forgot to cap it off on how many variables it could have. So, so the goal, if you're an attacker, is to get in there and inject some code, some, some calls to the code, I should say, that cause it to do a, like a buffer overflow, that cause the edge OS, the router software, to crash, right? And as soon as you do that, or you get some process inside of there, one, I mean, I, I would say simply, if, if it crashes and rebooted, you figured out a pretty sweet denial of service attack for that platform. But the ideal is that, that somebody, matter of fact, let's, let's come back here and look, that somebody could, could put some, some codes, in, codes in here or some, some variables in here that could actually run an, a program running essentially behind the Edge OS. Just about everything in the world is built on Linux, right? And if you can inject something into the code that actually either makes it crash or, or actually sends the call to the Linux kernel behind it, Whoo, that's dangerous. Matter, and matter of fact, hey, let's come back here for, for just a quick second. I went back to the main CVE. You can see this is a 9.0. What, what is the, you know, oh man, the confidentially impact, you know, how much data can you grab? It's everything, you know, all system files will be revealed. Integrity, this is a total compromise of system in integrity. This is what you want if you're a hacker. You want to be able to not just crash the device. I mean, that's, that's a short-lived glory. You're like, hey, I took down a router. You know, Eventually, the administrator is going to be like, uh, something's wrong with this router. And they're going to replace it with a different platform. And you're, you're out, right? Or they're going to upgrade the firmware. So, so crashing the router might be like, a, hey, you know, I'll, I'll put that, that mark on my, you know, my, my, my ring cabinet. My, my kid plays baseball. He gets all these rings when he wins a tournament. So you, you might do something like that, right? <coughs> Man. Um, but... Um, the main thing that you're after is to inject something behind, something that nobody ever sees, to be able to put something into the kernel of this router, right? So now you can actually funnel all of the traffic that's going through it and examine it, or, or, and, and, and nobody ever knows that's happening. That's dangerous. That's a, a level nine on CVVS, if you will, um, where, where somebody can get past there. Now, if you scroll down, it says, okay, here's the OS that's being affected. Here's the version, you know, keep going. And it, oh, down here, this is a big one, Metasploit, modules related to this. And okay, so, so what is this? Well, first off, we've talked a, a lot, just looking at that CVE of like, okay, you can use a printf function, right? With uncontrolled variable strings and you can, you can get in there. You and I might look at each other and be like, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I'll, I'll fully confess right now. I don't know how to inject some code into the router, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's the thing is people will say, well, most people wouldn't know how to do that. And that's why, and I want to convey this to you right now. To be a security professional doesn't mean that you've got, you know, old chicken bones sitting next to your computer, the beard growing where you're like, oh, I've got to figure this out. Uh -uh. People weaponize it. People take a CVE exploit, and that's, that's what they're showing you right here. You know, is there any Metasploit modules? Essentially, Metasploit is this exploit made easy. 
It's somebody who's taken that, that exploit and weaponized it, essentially turned it into a point and click thing where you don't have to know how to do print F overflow functions, right? You just go into the Metasploit and click the button and there's, there's a module that'll just say, I'm gonna do it for you, boom, you're in. What code do you wanna you know, exploit on this different device? That's why the security world is like, man, it's it's become very automated. There's there's some you know ext you know there are some people with chicken bones sitting there that are like ah and they create the the weaponized version of it. Now you've got the masses that can unleash these attacks, and that's why you as a security forensic person, as a security analyst, needs to go in there and be able to assess. Oh, hang on, right here, assess all these threat feeds and find out when a new threat comes out for the platforms that are in your organization. That's Part of, part of what your job is, right? So d down right here, last, last thing that I'll mention is fusion and maneuvering. Technically, this is called threat fusion. As, as you start developing your strategies for, okay, how am I gonna, how, how am I gonna exploit this? Not, not to hack it, we're, we're ethical people here. We're here to protect from the bad guys, right? You start doing something called threat fusion where you start looking at all the data that you're getting it and fusing it all together. That's why people call it threat fusion. It's just essentially putting all the puzzle pieces together to be like, okay, I can do this. The key is the vendor themselves are pretty good at, at you know, going to the databases, finding out if there's exploits, running, you know, running some scans, vulnerability scans, which is gonna be the next thing that I show you on their devices before they send them out. They're, they're, they're not dummies, right? They're, they're building network devices. What the hackers do is they, they run scans, they do you know, assessments, things like that, and they try to find things that are multiple things put together that the vendor may not have thought of, right? They may have ran a standard vulnerability scans, but the security, the hacker, you know, looks at it and goes, okay, well, if that's open, maybe I can take something over here and put it together. That's the maneuvering, right? Getting in, kind of bending, leaning around, taking the multiple feeds that you're getting, the multiple uh, things that are revealed from the vulnerability scan and maneuvering around them, assembling them to create a pretty formidable attack, right? For now, we have seen the techniques to essentially initially hack into this device. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbox this thing. We're gonna start doing some vulnerability scans and see if we can hack in. Keep it simple.